Hello, good day, and welcome back to Go On The Run. And today, I'm going to talk a little bit more about what a pod is. Now, in the last video, um, pods part two, I said that um, in the next video, I was gonna show you uh, what YAML files are, and sort of, since we're using it, spend some time understanding it. But I figured out, um, maybe I should just sort of um, close off and the pod stuff, it doesn't mean that we know everything about pods. We'll be using pods all the time. It's just the fundamental thing that we need to know in Kubernetes or how we manage um, containers and our application. And so it makes sense to start with pods. But since we got our stack to run, I thought it was a really good like, time to explain something that you may have noticed in Kubernetes that didn't make quite as much sense, but you accepted because it worked and it doesn't work that way when you use Docker Compose. So specifically, we saw that in order to get our stack to run, we our set of containers in the pod um, reached each other on local host as opposed to like some host name like we saw in Docker Compose. And so you may be thinking, well, if you know each um, microservice is running its own container and a container is just all this isolation stuff that we talked about how is it then that in Kubernetes, the pod itself looks like a host? And the reason it does is because it actually is. And so I'll show that to you. So when we start talking about pods, I showed you this. I said a pod is a Kubernetes resource. A pod is isolated the management of one or more containers. Um, we saw that's true. Within a pod, the containers share a common network and can communicate with each other. Obviously that's true because now we have this pod with several containers running and they can talk to each other. And then we use the cube run command to create one container within a pod. And then we started to tell you can use the YAML file to be able to create multiple containers within a pod. Well, to this, I'm gonna add this one other point and say a pod is a logical host with a unique IP address. And I'll prove that to you. And I'll show you it, but you already know that this is true, that it's a logical host, because all the containers they were running and they were reaching each other on local hosts, and that was only possible if the pod itself didn't operate like a host in itself, and each container is really running like a process. And we're not gonna get into it, but I showed you that uh, with, even with containers, your, what your container is really running is a process that has all sort of isolation rules that Linux is able to enforce to give it, you know, um, the security and almost make it look like it's our own host. But it's really just process. So back to our picture here um, with a cluster and a pod with containers in it. And I showed you this before, and this is what pod is. It, the containers are allowed to communicate with each other because the pod itself is a logical host. And the pod has an IP address, and I'll show you that in a minute. So let's now go to our command line. Before I go to my command line, you see I am at my Kubernetes dashboard and I am using K3D. Now, when you use Minikube, it was easy to say, you know, Minikube dashboard and get the dashboard up and running. But if you have me um, using K3D and you have a stack running, then you don't have the dashboard. So how do you have the, you get a dashboard? So this is how you get a dashboard. Let's go to Kubernetes.io click on documentation, right? So let's say you land on Kubernetes.io, click on documentation, then click on task on the left-hand side. And then here where it says um, access application in a cluster, click on that. And then you see one of the first thing here is deploy and access Kubernetes dashboard. And you click on that. And then it's gonna tell you how to access Kubernetes dashboard. And all you do is you run this command, just copy this. And what it does is, if you remember, I tell you the apply command means that if something isn't there, create it. If it is, update it. We'll talk more about it later. And the minus F is so the file, the YAML file. And the YAML file in this case happens to be um, in a gipped up repo. So anyway, um, or on this host. And so that's where we access, right? And so that's going to get the Kubernetes dashboard installed, but you still can't access it. What you need to do is create a sample user. So I'll open this, go here, and it tells you to create a sample user. 
you need to put this in a file, a YAML file, which is the username and the namespace or that it's going to belong to. And this is the namespace, namespace in which the Kubernetes dashboard is running. We didn't talk about namespace, but just accept these things for now. And so just put this in a file and it tells you you can put it in a file and then run cube apply minus F again. Now here's a tip. Instead of creating, you'll need to create a role or permission for that user, okay? Um, instead of creating two files, because that's what you have to do, put this in one file, run cube apply minus F on that file, and then put this in another file and run cube minus F. What you can do is just create one file and put these two things within, and literally just copy them, don't change anything. And what you can do is if you do, and so I'm going to be using uh, creating a dashboard often because I'm going to be using K3D. So I sort of create this file and notice that's the first part that I copied. And then I put this dash dash, which sort of separate the two things. And then I paste the second thing. I didn't change anything. And now both things are in one file. And now I just do cube apply or cube CTL apply, and then it will create those resources, which is will create those things, right? It will create the new user given this role. All right. So once you finish that part of it, you're not quite done yet because that's how you create a sample user, a user. Now you need to run cube CTL proxy, and once you run that, cube is going to bind a port from a cluster to a local host at port 80, 8001. Then you need to click on this link. Once you click on this link, you're going to see something like, well, um, I don't like the page here, but you're going to see a page that asks you to either use a token or, you know, your config file. You want to use token. And the way you do that is, let me see if I can go back here and log out and show you. So let me do log out. And you're going to see a page like this and it says token and so what you do is you have to run to get the um the token you have to run this command so again you just copy this or just click here and if i go here and i run this command it's going to give me a token now the reason i can show you my token and notice be careful and don't copy that percent at the end okay the reason I can show you my token is because I'm going to destroy this cluster and recreate it. So, um, and then this is all private anyway, so you, you won't be able to access it. And so I'll leave this on token. I'll paste this here and I'll say sign in. And then there you go. I have the kubectl, um, the Kubernetes dashboard in, for my K3 cluster. But now that we have this up, look at this. If I click on pod over here, you'll see that um, here it says resource information, which is information of that pod resource, right? It's telling me that it's running on a particular node. Node, well, that's because my cluster, this Kubernetes cluster I have, um, has three nodes. We didn't really talk about the architecture of Kubernetes, but it has worker node and server nodes, or used to call master back in the day, and worker. Um, now they call them agent, I think, and um, server. And so because Kubernetes is a cluster where you have multiple nodes, your application could be running on any node and or your pod, right? And so um, this is one of the nodes that's running on. And if I spin up something else, it's gonna run another, it may run on this same node or another agent, right? Node agent when we use them interchangeably. Uh, but here's that IP that I told you about for um, this pod, each pod of IT because why it has an IP address is because the pod itself is like a logical host. All right, so let me do two things. One is above here, I'm gonna run kubectl get nodes. I'm gonna do minus w for watch. And you can see that it's telling me that my Kubernetes cluster as one server as on one host. And actually, I'm gonna do something else. I'm gonna say, minus O wide and then minus W for um, watch. And so now if I do this, what by using the minus wide um, thing, well, okay. You can see that it's telling me at all, um, it's ready, all this other stuff. The name of it, status is ready, role is a control plane versus um, agent. This should say worker or agent, but we can see from the name. 
and then aligns with up the version internal IP address for that each one of those hosts. And notice the hosts themselves have internal their own IP address, uh, external IP address. Don't worry about that. So basically, within the cluster, these are, that's the IP address for these um, I'm thing. Now, um, this would be like if I physically had four machines, like either VMs or four machines, and I install Kubernetes, and this is the kind of cluster I have, right? And the OS image and stuff. Okay. In this other window below here, I'm going to do kubectl get pod or pods, it doesn't matter, minus O wide and then minus weight also, watch rather. And you can see I have my diversity stack running. There are four containers within that pod and all four of them are running, right? So four to four to up. Zero restart, all lines have been running, and that's the pod's IP address, and there's the node on which it's running, which, as you can see, this is that node. And, you know, don't worry about all the other things, right? Um, now, we see the same information here, the IP address, blah, 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 and it's running. If I were to, let me clean this up, and do kubectl run, and if you remember, we can do nginx, Let's do nginx zero, and we're gonna do minus minus image equals nginx. And if I run that, you'll see I have another, um, you know, part coming up. You now it's in pending, and oh, it's running. So the state is kind of. Um, let me clean up here. Control C, and then clean this up and then run again. And now you can see it's only two parts, it's just that it didn't clean up properly. And you can see that how this is running. And notice the IP address for this part is completely different, but it's running on, it, this time it's running on the server node, right? Uh, there's more to why it's running there and all this other stuff. We will talk about that later on. You can taint the server so that uh, it doesn't actually do any work. But for now, if you don't do that, then work, no, um, parts can be spun up on the server node also. So that's what's happening. And if I run yet another Nginx or Redis, so I can say, let me just run a Redis a pod, I'm called Redis, and it could be an Nginx also. And I run that, and let me control that, and then clean up, and you can see, oh, maybe a little too soon, let me give it a second to start, and then you can see it's running, and yet it has a different IP address, and it's on another host. Well, let me show you the documentation and then I'll close this off. So we know how to run the dashboard already, so I'll close this and I'll just go back to Kubernetes documentation here. And okay, I could have clicked on concept and then I'll click on workload. And you can see, let me zoom in and I'll read free. A workload is an application running on Kubernetes. Whether your workload is a single component or several that work together, on Kubernetes, you run it inside a set of pods. In Kubernetes, a pod represents a set of running containers on your cluster. We'll see more about this, but I just wanted you to understand that Kubernetes, in terms of how you run your, you get your application to run, it's always yeah, at the level of a pod. Now I'm going to skip all this and jump to pod. And so pods are the smallest, right? That's why I said it's the most fundamental thing in Kubernetes. Pods are the smallest deployable unit of computing that you can create and manage in Kubernetes. A pod, as in a pod of wheels, I mentioned this also before, is a group of one or more containers with shared storage and networking. We didn't mention the shared storage part because we don't need to really talk about that just yet, but shared network and resources. We mentioned that. And a specification for how to run the containers. That's what we saw. This is what a pod was. This is a pod resource, and it's a specification that says, I have a set of containers, and this is how you run those containers, quite literally. So a pod contents are always co-located and co-scheduled means it's kept together co-located, and co-scheduled means that how it is set to run or stop together all the things within a pod and run in a shared context. So we sort of know that already. They can, they, they're managed together. A pod models a application specific logical host. This is the thing I wanted to get to, a logical host, right? 
it contains one or more application containers which are relatively tightly coupled. And we said that to get before. How do you know what to put in the same pot? The set of containers that are tightly coupled, they need to always be together. They need to scale in the same way. We haven't talked much about scaling yet, but then you're gonna want them to be in the same pod. And here to show you what a pod looks like in YAML, how you define a pod. And we've seen this already. The API version, the pod, metadata about the pod, and then the specification that said which containers get to run. And I told you that that's what's all you basically need. The other part about the resources limit, that was optional, um, but basically that's it. All right, next video, I will go into YAML files so that we understand them and know to use them and we are comfortable with YAML file because we'll be seeing a lot of YAML files. So it makes sense for us to sort of do a little bit of a digress, but because it's our Kubernetes, I'm gonna still keep it here within Kubernetes. Before I get out of here, if you got it to this far in the video and you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. Um, you watched the video, what do you think? Leave a comment, thumbs up the video. If you have some issue with it, please let me know. Um, constructive feedback, welcome. But please, I would appreciate if you can subscribe. For those who are already subscribed, thank you. And appreciate you sticking around and coming back to check out the video and being and, and supporting the channel. All right, take care, stay safe, bye.